Welcome to Trading Lounge and the daily US stocks for Friday the 1st of July. So a new month. Um, just before I start, I just wanted to um, show my little doggy because he's always scratching around in the background and uh, knocking on the door and all those sort of things. So this is the little blighter here. Um, so that's Minky. Uh, there's a whale called Minky, and that's what we named him after. Um, he's a cavoodle, um, but yeah, he's the one that uh, he's sort of scratching around in the background a lot. Uh, there you go. So, um, the markets, the NASDAQ. Now, the NASDAQ is interesting because it's actually got five waves down uh, through here, where the S&P is a little bit trickier to count those five waves down. But it is the tech stocks that are sort of leading, so um, we can go with this particular five waves. I can force five waves in the uh, on the S and P, but like I said, I'd be forcing them a little bit. So we always need to be mindful of both sides of the market. But for the Nasdaq, it's pretty clear that we've got five waves down here now, uh, in terms of one and two and three and four and one two three four five now and then the a the b and the c wave here now you may be short here already um, and it does appear that uh, we've got this uh, impulse wave to the upside here and a and a three wave counter trend uh, coming into play here for this uh, abc correction um, of course, the market can just continue straight down from here, but um, I think that we need to be prepared for uh, a little five wave move to the upside of one and two and three. Sometimes wave three really just comes across. We may not go up as far as I'm thinking because sometimes wave three really just goes to the previous high here. And then that would leave wave five a little bit short, probably into the 11700 or something at that point. So just be a little bit sort of careful about that. Um, if you have short positions in stocks or uh, indices at the moment, um, and then we're expecting this rally here, you may not want to go through that. So you may need to um, adjust your positions for that, like either uh, exit, but you'd sort of want to exit on a, on a positive note to make sure that, you know, the market would need to prove to you that it's going up. So, you know, taking this top out here, for example, you could take some money off the table or take it all off at, all off at the table here and then ha and then wait to get back in over here everybody's a little bit different um but the risk is is that we're going up and the other thing too is that wherever friday closes if it's positive then monday is likely to follow through on that as well okay so just be mindful of that we may go up for the morning session and then roll over you know all those sorts of things now this being wave one low here we can go short below that this being the B wave low, wait till that goes up here a little bit, and then you can use that um, over here as well. But coming over here, you'd want a classic trading levels pattern to uh, to the downside uh, here for that. So drawing that out here would see the arrival, the reaction, uh, the first low below the level, and then some sort of retest that normally goes back above the level look it could end up like this not such a pretty picture here um and you may make mistakes and things but you're just looking for the low all the time you know that's what you're looking for um at that point and if it's triggered then then you're on your merry way but otherwise uh if it goes back up then you're safe and it's quite surprising how it will save you um uh, this save you a lot because a lot of the time it just comes down and then goes back up so if you give it a chance to sink in to the depth of the strength uh, there then it's safety also too let's just say that we get five waves up here then when we've got a trend line here the market does the same thing as well it will come down and bounce off it and then goes you know bounce off it go through it come back and check it uh, and then drop from that point and then th this would be also a nice way to move in because at this time you've also got three waves here that would be an ABC so that means that um, anything below those a uh, three wave structure would be um, would be bearish at that point um, you've also got to just be a little bit careful because sometimes 
with your stop because sometimes what will happen is that you'll get triggered in here for example and then you'll go back and test it again and come back down <coughs> so you need to uh need to um just be mindful of that price action and leave your stop a little bit further out i mean this is the, the levels here are always quite handy because you've got this is a medium level here as an example and then this is group two here so you know i would keep my stop if i was taking a position in here because of whatever reasons but let's just say that um let's say that uh that the 65 level here became the resistance at this point and i wanted to take that low you know got a classic trading levels pattern on the bearish side down here well then i'd need to leave my stop above group two here and then i couldn't bring it down until the next level became the resistance then I could bring it down. So once that becomes the resistance, then I can bring it down to the next level and so on down. This is group one here. So then this has got its own set of problems because when this comes down to 11, uh, down to 11, three, 11 is not important. It's, it's a number three. You'll always get a strong bounce off that. In this case, it went back above the level. But most times it'll just, if you're in the trend, um, because really this market, is sort is doing a classic trading levels pattern here so it's got the arrival the reaction the first low below the level the abc pattern so if we look at that on the bearish side we've got uh does it want to open does it want to open yeah so it's got the arrival the reaction the first low below the level the abc pattern here and still haven't fixed that sorry about that but we're going to bring that back up so at the moment we're here we're in b wave so we're looking for that c wave coming back up and then into that space so this is a bigger classic trading levels pattern at at this medium level here you know so uh and then we got grouped and that the swing range for this level is group two above and group one below that's the swing range for for that you know so we need to be mindful of that um, anyway, just shooting the breeze on that. Look, the main takeaway here for stocks is that for the NASDAQ, we have five waves down. We don't have that with the S&P, so we can have a, a bullish count for the S&P. So we'll need to be a little bit sort of careful. So just be mindful um, of that, but watch the indices video for that. So just to repeat, in most stocks, we're looking for a uh, a five wave move up and then a rollover at that point shorting coming up from the bottom shorting the lows will be the will be the safe trade shorting from the top will be the higher risk trade okay so with apple here we need to look at it as one abc for two nice strong third wave fourth wave and uh fifth wave down here for wave one we've got the a wave the b wave and the c wave going up here let's open this up a little bit i'll just bring this across here because it's important that <clears throat> we know where we're at where we're at with that so um possibly looking at an abc pattern here for this because apple can also be counted to the upside from this low here it can be counted as a bullish pattern i've got it as an a and a b and a c wave here but it can be counted and this is where the s p comes in as one and two here and then one and two and three and four and five for the third wave fourth wave here and then one two three four five here so we can count it as a in this case we can count it as five waves um so yeah uh yeah as always we need to be careful at certain points so once again here if you're short here then you've got the opportunity to take profit right now or um take part profit or do nothing and wait for this to play out as an a wave a b wave one two three four five just like we saw on the nasdaq into the 140 area and then move down the safe trade is coming up from the lows on this so you may be short here already, but um, yeah, that's what we're looking at at this point. What we could say is that if the 140 became a classic trade, because it's the the 61.8% retracement level roughly, if we've got a classic trading levels pattern on this here, then we'd need to be bullish at that point. So if we were looking for... Um, you know, something at 140, if we got that, we'd be buying the highs at that point. So, but let's see. So there is risk, but this is where we're at at the moment. And let's move that across.
and NVIDIA is much the same as well. So from the high, we've got one and two and three and four and five here and looking for the A wave, the B wave and the C wave back over here. Um, will it get all the way up there? Because we always have to remember that I mean, obviously news events can drive things, but generally speaking, we would look for equality between wave A and wave C. So it might struggle to get there. So just be mindful um, of that. Um, and you can ob obviously look to short it over here. The 165, the beginning of minor group two, so 65, 72 and 80 up here. Um, if, if support came in at 65, then with a classic trading levels pattern, then you know that would be bullish from that point. But otherwise, um, yeah. And if the 150 becomes the resistance at any point, then you know that you need to, um, you know, find ways into the market that, uh, that you can manage your risk at best. But yeah, all in all, um, here we've got a nice strong impulse wave to the downside. The bounce is a bit, you know, it's a, not a strong bounce, you know, it's hit supply back uh, here in this uh, typical sideways wave four. And uh, yeah, so getting up to the numbers up here, of course, everybody would focus on 160 and that's, that's, a, that's, that's important. Um, but the next important number within all of that is, well, from 150 to 160, we count the Fibonacci numbers, don't we? So as a price ratio, so we'd go one, two, three as group one, and then five and then eight. So we call eight a profit taking number. So the bids, you'll see it in the market depth, all the bids will start being building up at that number. But if we're talking about that, if we're talking about group two here, let's put in number five, because five's the second strongest number. And when we're talking about group two here, we're talking, we need to talk about uh, 65. So in this case, it's 15650 bit of an odd sort of thing but you'll see that play in in due course and 720 there so the 72 number all of that little area there that's going to play out even though it hasn't played out over here it will play out uh, in the next next move there because they're the strongest numbers in that space so we may you may just get to there so if the market trades above group two and then it comes down and it finds the 65 here the 15650 as a retested resistance then you need to get a short trade from that point all right if it trades above there and then you can also add to that short trade under the 55 there as well when it comes back down here it's going to bounce again and so on and then eventually go through if it's going in that direct if it indeed it's going in that direction but um yeah we'll see Alrighty, um, Amazon. Amazon's another one with a nice one, two, three, four, five. So we've got, you know, we are getting that impulse wave from the, you know, the big NASDAQ stocks, which is, which is important, eh? You know, um, the A wave, the B wave, one, two, three, four, five, coming back up into 110 area here, probably in that space there. So as wave C of two here, you may want to short it in this box here. You may want to use the trend line, wait for, as we talked about the trend line, um, as it will come down, bounce back off it, go through it, come back and test it. So then you can put that, you know, that trigger under there for that. Um, you can short it again, um, depending where that is, like between 110 here, you've got one, two, three, five and eight. So you want to be short once the eight becomes a retested resistance, but you could probably do it off that. You want to do it at the five here as well. Under here is not such a big deal because when the market comes down into 100 here, it's going to bounce a lot anyway. It's going to bounce at, um, at one, two, and three here that's all group one there and then under that's group two here so it's going to get rough here you know three is the strongest number is one then five then eight then three so the, and you can see three playing out here nicely like that um but yeah anyway that's sort of where we are let's uh see so this wave three here if correct should be longer than this move here but this number one here will will give us a fair bit of grief at that at that point, I'm sure. Um, radio. So um, 
uh, meta platform so we're looking that's the high so we'll take that because it's the best fit one two three a b c for four and down for five for one and then the a wave the b wave and the c wave back here and then down from that point so you can see the 160 here is really important the 165 here is part of minor group two 65 72 and uh 80 to the upside so i mean there's lots of other important numbers in here this is just the shell of it all so it hasn't been able to get back into group two it's tried to get up there and it's you know it's trying to get there um let's see i mean if it does get there and gets a classic trading levels pattern here well then it can go up from that point but otherwise uh, moving down now we've got short positions in here we're keeping the stop out of the way because we always wanted to keep the stop out of the way until we got wave two in play okay that's the main gist of it all if you don't want to take any heat going up here well then you'll need to look to either take profit here or uh, take some money off the table only if you want to do you know what I mean depends on what you've got in there and you know uh, all those sorts of things so I'll leave that up to you to manage that um, but yeah far far as we're, we're doing everything I think everything is fine here so that's all good and <clears throat> uh, Tesla so with Tesla here we've got uh, wave one here wave two up here and then we've got one two uh, three four five here then we've got the a wave the b wave and the c wave so a move back to 700 would be it um we've sort of waited for this you could probably bring this down here and and look to short it in there and turn that green and all that sort of stuff if you wanted to um but we still need to leave the stop out of the way we can move the stop down a little bit from that point there as well um the other so that's a risk trade at this point um but i think it's too risky because it's a reasonable five waves and it's strong coming down um so the abc is the bounce the corrective bounce so we can short it under wave b here you could also look for uh the trend line here to help you guide you and set you up over here because if that goes three four sometimes the wave four will most of the time wave four will uh, just nip through the tr to, through the trend line so just be a little bit careful about that you need to be able to count the five waves up so it can look like this um, wave three could go up here wave four could cross over here on the trend line then have wave five coming up then you need to work that classic trading levels pattern on that trend line and maybe the 700 at that point as well and then come down at that point and, and move it up at this point um yeah many roads to rome um but uh there we go so the next one is uh alphabet so alphabet is much the same as tesla and also presenting a good case too in terms of one two three four five to the downside and then an a wave a b wave and a c wave here in the box you can short it in the box there should be some correlation in terms of length between wave a and wave c here the safe trade is coming up from the bottom taking that one out once that if that moves up there then then put that in there do you know what i mean like on the open if it comes down and triggers it that's not what it's all about it's about we'll push that over there um when when that c wave comes in and when this comes back down that would be the short trade at that point uh you could also look to short it further up as well so once the market if the market comes up there and all the rest of it and it comes back down and the two two here the group one here if that becomes the retested resistance the 200 then you can look to short that because that's all of group one of two major trading level two one two three that's all minor group one if two becomes the resistance which this is really all about really so we'll have an a b c coming back up probably hitting the all of this here um and then coming down so you could probably pull that curtain down to at least 48 somewhere 35 223 2234 so based on that five waves there we should have a correction and then another five coming down we'll leave the stop out of the way up above the two three and also with stops as well you don't put a stop on th 300 never put a stop on whole number because you're just attracting um the market to you so if i was doing it then and i'm not saying i'm perfect but 
if if the market comes up to here, that's likely to be sold off. And then what happens? It pushes up through there and um, and then you wait for that first high to come in. And then that's where you put your stop. Once that comes in, just put it one point above and uh, there you go at that point. And then what normally happens after that is that you'll get the second high and then that will come down. And then you bring this stop down to the second high here, right? It's a bit like this here, say. So this is the top here, right? Wait for that. And then you can bring it down to that high and then down to that high. Now, it's not to say that you're not going to get triggered out, but at least you're doing all the right things. You're following the market around, you know, and that's what you'd be doing over here because we're expecting it to, to, to go up and roll over. Now, it could go up further than I expected it to, you know, and do this here and freak you out. And then you go, my God, that's gone up too high, you know. But then then you put this into play. You go this way, that way, and and, you know, so it's... If you do all the right things at the right time, it's not always going to pan out, but over time it pans out. So you get that average on your side. Okay, so the next one is <clears throat> Microsoft. So once again here, a little bit uh, dodgy. You could probably put this over here, not that it matters too much, but one, two, got a nice, nice third wave here with one, two, three in it. Uh, ABC for the fourth, uh, probably WXY really, but it doesn't matter. And then one, two, three, four, five here for wave one. So we've got wave one, we've got the A, the B, and one, two, three, four, five for the C wave here. If um, you're short here and here, and you don't want to let that profit turn into a loss, well, then you'll need to manage that situation and you'll need to either take profit here or take a percentage at that point there to lessen the blow and then look to find another way in. And, you know, we've been talking sometimes, depending on where wave B is, we can use the trend line through here. This would be OK. So we could look for um, copy that. We can use that trend line to move back in on over here. If that, you know, once we get five waves up here and the trend line becomes the resistance, you can use the low of wave B. So um, wait for the market to to move up. Um, and of course, if the market moves straight down from here because I've made a mistake or something, um, then uh, you know, you need to short it here. Obviously, the market's going to bounce at the 250 and you're going to get some sort of classic trading levels pattern here. That's for sure. You know, at this number. Um, so it'll be the normal sort of thing uh, here. So probably be like this. And then down at that point so that we you know then we can look to short it over here for that you can short it on the rises here too it just depends on what the structure looks like coming down because we don't want to have it like as an a wave a b wave and a c wave here then it's like oh can that go up from that point where are we here how does this all add up can we look at this as one and two and three and four and five in here? An A and a B and a C, is that possible? You know, you've got to kind of consider all. So taking the safe trade doesn't always get you the best price, but it's just safer, you know. I don't mind losses, you know. All, all businesses have them. Um, I just find them annoying because... You know, if you lose a dollar, then you got to make a, you know, you got to make sort of a, a dollar back just to break even. So it's kind of, uh, it's like being told to go sit in the naughty corner for a while, you know. <laughs> um, Radio, Microsoft, um, Berkshire. So I'm probably pushing the barra here a little bit with um, looking for five waves down into this space, but I still have to go, um, I still have to look for another five waves up here for this. Now, this is like the S&P in a way. It does count nicely down as an ABC pattern. We could also count it differently as well. No, I mean, you could look at it as wave one here with an A and a B and a C to that point, but that's not going to cut it because that little move here is in three waves. We have to expect that to move up here into that box there. So uh, you may be short at the moment with this. I, I can't remember what happened with this here, to be honest. I don't know what we did with that. I think I would have been talking about looking for the B wave here on that. And then that's gap down here. Um, 
I don't know what I said, but let's just assume that let's just assume that we've got a trade in here somewhere, right? Um, so we know that. Let's just double check this for a moment. So that is the 61.8% up there. So the eight here is important. Um, of course, the 80 is more important. Um, and then the length of this here, let's just get that length there, just so we kind of get a good idea of everything. Um, and so 78, it's really where the, the supply here, of course, and we'll see how that slows it down at that point. But the next one from here to here, the 78 here, always call eight a profit taking number. So yeah, we still really need, we really need, we, you either got to get out here or take some off the table or leave the stop above the eight here, you know. You could probably do that trick that I showed you at the 78 here, that would probably be all right but i'll just leave it for here for the time being um so let's just pretend we've got a position in there i'll leave that up to you once again uh, of course uh you can always make a decision right now to half the risk here i don't like letting a um i don't like letting a trade turn into a losing a winning trade into a losing trade unless i'm trying to get through a whole series of ones and twos and in a way that's what we're trying to do at the moment we're trying to build in positions uh for all of this so um that's that and over to uh square block um i don't know if they're still calling it square are they or or block um anyway um so we've got really quite a nice five waves down here and we haven't made a low here you know if we had made a low on five waves like making a new low down here then i'd kind of consider that we could have a low in place but based on this i don't think that's the case so we've got one and two here and then we've got one and two and one and two three four five for the third fourth fifth that we went through yesterday some sort of a lot of the markets have got this as a triangle pattern and other little patterns here that was pretty common through a lot of markets uh, and then wave five coming down so we do have a nice five waves here and um yeah and then an a and a b and a c wave here for this once that um once that market pushes up, we can use that B wave here again. You may not want to add to the position up here if that's what you're looking at as well. I'll leave that up to you. Um, but yeah, based on that five waves, we should have an ABC and then move down at that point. Now the banks are a little bit different because the banks have actually made, I'm going to look at this as five waves down here. This is BAC. So I'm going to count as one and two, one and two and three and four and five for the third wave in here. And then the fourth and the fifth, giving us wave one here, an A and a B and a C wave here for wave two in this box. And you might want to sell it in that box as well. But we have made a new low here. So in terms of looking at the bullish count, because we have... I always like to look at both sides of the market and I know that's annoying because we just really want to make money but we have made new lows this is an all-time low here for in this big trend so it is possible to call this wave five here anyway it's just food for thought I don't think it's the case I think as I mentioned when this whole bear market started the banks were leading the way um, and it looks like they're still doing that so um, but they'll probably lead the way out too because when after I mean it didn't happen in COVID because of all the money pumped into the system but generally speaking um, it's the banks that lead us out of recession but I'm not an expert on, on that either but you know the money's got to flow for you know so people can spend uh, and and that's the uh, that's the source of it all isn't it you know they're the ones that create it out of thin air um it's not that they created it thin air, you know. They'll sell you $100 and give the Fed $1, something like that, you know. Um, 
so look same thing here i just we're just going to get this rally and then uh turning down so we can the safe trade is the b wave here we've got positions in here so you may want to take some money off the table and put it back in over here and do all sorts of things the trend line here is not going to be it'll be okay but it's not you know, it, it'll get you sort of a 3150, but you could just do that anyway. You know, you can just put a horizontal line at 3150 in this case as well. It's significant. And between 31 and 32, the levels start up there again. So all you need to do is count to eight. So um, basically um, between there's 10 digits between 31 and 32 so uh one two three five and eight here for this so um anyway i'll let you sort that out um and that's that and the next one is jp so looking at this also making a new low down here as well uh we could be short here and you could be short here um you might want to if if we do make a new high above here that looks that looks like it's in uh as a corrective pattern one two three four five here so some something across here then oh, what have we got here that's working backwards working backwards one two three four five yeah so an a and a b just into here for that an a b here and one a b c for two so look we're going to go up if you if you wanted if you want to um if you want to act that's the place to act at this point in time um so that will probably take the morning session on Friday. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens in the afternoon session. If the afternoon session is like that, then you know Monday is going to be like that. You know, um, I expected, uh, I didn't quite get it right because I was thinking that Thursday, um, Thursday would be the rally day and Thursday afternoon we could start shorting, but um, the timing's out by half a day so it's not going to be any good so we just have to see if friday afternoon session is going to be sold off and it probably will you know because you've got firecracker day or what uh, uh july the fourth um on uh on, on monday so it might just be going up on low volume and rolling over but when they come back from holidays normally they're quite quite positive and chirpy you know um so it should be sort of anyway we'll see see how it all goes um anyway that's that's it that's the lot so i think my takeaway with everything is i can see a bullish scenario case for the s p 500 but looking at all of these stocks you know we we are seeing a, a reasonable sort of impulse wave to the downside and because the banks made new lows uh we can't look at it as a corrective pattern you know we could look at it as a low here that's the thing but um yeah so my bias is still on track to be moving down further but i see the i see the bullish side of things as well so anyway i'll do some work on the indices video next and we'll have a look at the russell and maybe the mid cap on the s p and a few things Alrighty, uh cheers <laughs>